The Cessna 172 is the safest and most forgiving aircraft ever built to date. This 172M Skyhawk 2 is a special plane. It can do nine things better than the standard 172M. You will not find the combination of all these in another 172M. This 172 even has a very interesting electronic ignition, which is a newer technology that's emerging in aviation and in my opinion, is something that should have been done a while ago. Number one, it has more power than a standard 172M. Number two, it can climb faster than a standard 172M. Number three, it can fly faster than a standard 172M. Number four, it can fly and land in the dark without any gauges, vacuum, or electricity. Number five, it burns less fuel than a standard 172M, getting over 20 miles per gallon. Number six, it can take off and land in very short fields and out in the backcountry where a standard 172M can't. Number seven, it can fly higher than a standard 172M. Number eight, it can glide much longer with no power than a standard 172M. And number nine, it can fly slower than a standard 172M. We'll show you, it's like it's hanging in the air. We appreciate you watching our videos. Aviation is our passion and we make these videos to share that passion with everyone. It takes a lot of work and many days of our time to make videos like this. So when you like our videos and subscribe to our channel, that is the best thanks we can get for what we do. This 172 is for sale, so I'm going to go into some of the particulars on this specific aircraft. So please bear with me for just a minute. I promise I'll get right into those nine special things that this plane can do and how they're achieved. But if you're interested, the link to the airplane listing is below the video, so you can go and see all the details there if you like. This is a 1976 Cessna 172M. The 172M is the most desirable 172 model. This model was started in 1973, and this 1976 is the last year they were made. This is a Skyhawk 2 package with some extra features. It has all logs, no damage history, and was previously owned by a well-experienced pilot. 2020 ADS-B out mandate has been complied with. Now without ADS-B, you can't fly over 10,000 feet MSL or into any class C or B airspace. And most importantly, others rely on ADS-B traffic as well, and they won't see you as easily without it. This plane has both the ADS-B in and out, so you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on the upgrade. For most of us, owning an airplane is not just another form of transport, it is our pride too, especially when we take family and friends with us. This airplane has been completely repainted with the latest paint scheme, the pearl white Three-tone paint is gorgeous. A complete strip and paint job like this would usually cost around $15,000. Now I did notice a few minor paint chips that are in need of touch up, but overall it is shiny and it looks great. It's very clean on the surface, no corrosion, no damage, and no hail. So talking about this wing a little bit, obviously the M models have a drooped wing tip, which is the camber lift wing. But as you can see, this one is completely different. The style on this is because there is a stoll kit installed where the short field landing, um, short field takeoff and landing, excuse me. So this is an FAA approved upgrade that comes with five significant advantages. And those include an increased rate of climb, an increased glide ratio, increased fuel economy. It raises the service ceiling of the plane and it reduces both the landing and takeoff speeds. This 172M comes with one of the best engines made for small airplanes. The Lycoming O320 E2D is a parallel valve, horizontally opposed engine. These engines will usually run anywhere from 3000 to 3800 hours without having a major overhaul or even having to remove a cylinder. And this is the last year that Cessna installed this engine in the 172. So the last year that you can get it from the factory like this. This particular engine has had a few different things done to it. 
One of them is that the cylinders have been polished, which will generate more power. As you can see here, there is an electronic ignition, which will increase the reliability and the efficiency and has fuel savings as well as giving more power to the engine. Overall, lots of space around this engine, makes it easy for maintenance. Um, we got the quick drain down there on the oil pan, so that's really simple for um, doing your oil changes. Just pop a hose on there and you're able to do an oil change. Um, oil capacity on this is eight quarts. Um, usually this one likes to run a little around seven or thereabouts. It also has the spin on oil filter in the backside. Um, you can see overall, nice clean engine. And one of the other things that I want to talk about on this one is the power flow exhaust. So there's many advantages to having this power flow exhaust, which is really just a rearrangement of the exhaust design, which helps make the exhaust flow better. And I believe that that extra power is gained. A lot of it is because of the energy. There's less energy wasted when the um, engine is on the exhaust stroke due to how the exhaust um, pipes are all rearranged. Um, there's no change to the internal parts of the factory engine with this power flow exhaust. And you can see it sticks out um, down and around a little bit there. I'm guessing about 5,500 to install based on the time, um, parts and labor costs on that. And you're gonna notice that there's an immediate increase in RPM of anywhere from 30 to 130 which will significantly improve your rate of climb anywhere from 100 to 300 feet per minute. And you know what, if you want to save fuel, you can use less throttle and fly at your current cruise speeds and save from a half to 2.2 gallons per hour. But you can also give more power and use that extra RPM where 100 RPM will probably give you about five knots of airspeed at only about a half a gallon per hour of fuel burn. Another thing is, is that the service ceiling on the 172 increases by up anywhere from two to 5,000 feet. And that also has an increase in your safety margins while in high density altitude environments. Um, another thing is, is that the CHTs are reduced from anywhere from 100 to 200 degrees of Fahrenheit. And there's less difference in between each of the individual cylinders. So overall, the engine runs better and performs better with these modifications. Getting back to those nine things that this 172 can do better than a standard 172M. One, it has more power than a standard 172M because of the power flow exhaust, polished cylinders, and electronic ignition add more horsepower to this 172. Two, it can climb faster than a standard 172M because of the increased power and the extra lift from the stoll kit. And three, it can fly faster than a standard 172M because of the increased power was achieved without putting a heavier engine in the plane. One of our company branches is in, on Gillespie Field in beautiful San Diego, California. It's a really busy airspace with multiple complex Bravo layers and delta rings. And on top of that, mountainous terrain with a whole lot of traffic. And then there's the turbulence. The performance and especially the panel of this plane really decreases the pilot workload and when we're flying this one around it lets us fly precisely in a complex environment like this so we can take in the gorgeous views. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more of our fun and informative videos. Okay so having the iPad here with the data capability makes it very easy to set everything up. You've got current info in a matter of seconds. Uh, first thing we want to do is since we are taking a flight here. Let's check the current meter, see what the winds and the cloud condition is like, and visibility, everything like that. Um, it's very nice. You can go in and you can run in the forecast as well, so we can see that our current clouds and sky condition is good. We're going to go to the airport information. We've got NOTAMs and our TFRs, so we can see what our NOTAMs are here. It looks like 27 right is closed currently. The other thing we can do on here is we can run quickly just to see what our turbulence is going to be like in the area. So we can zoom out a little bit and we can see, I'm going to go down to closer to ground level here. Don't have any turbulence down towards the bottom. So if we go up to even 5,000, it's blue. If it's starting to turn orange and yellow, then those are the heavier areas of turbulence. So it looks like it's pretty 
clear out there today. Um, other thing we have is our ADSB for the traffic. Okay, so we've got a direct to, but when we go in here, we can see we've got Bravo airspace, we've got multiple layers, and then over here we've got some mountains. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna readjust our route. We've got an area that we know we normally fly at, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it up here. The nice thing about this is that you can zoom in and you can check different areas and set it up if you're not familiar with the airspace I already kind of know which direction we want to go. When we go into our flight plan here we've got a couple of things we can check here. One is our profile view so it's going to show you when we do our um, takeoff and our flying and we can adjust the altitude that we're going to fly at here and we can see obviously that we'd run into some terrain if we were to go down that low so we can adjust how high or how low we want to go. The blue air spaces here are based on um, the Bravo shelves as well as the um, Delta shelves or the Delta rings for the other airports. Okay so the other thing we're going to do here is we need to pack and that's where the data capability comes in handy as well because you can get all your notams for the airports within this area ring. You can get your weather your SIGMETs and your AIRMETs and your TFRs and also fuel prices. I mean, that's something good to know if you're going to be flying IFR. It's got IFR low charts, which we're not going to do today, so we won't worry about packing that. So moving on to the panel, as you can see, it's a very clean, simple layout. Makes it very easy for the pilot to scan. Um, over here, you've got your standard gauges. Um, you've got your VOR indicators and your fuel and your oil gauges as well over there is your RPM. Um, some of the upgrades that you have on this one that are not standard on this is an avionics master switch um, down underneath so that you don't have to shut off your avionics individually, which is nice because you do have digital nav comms here and they're both digital and you can set up multiple frequencies on each. Makes it very easy to dial in multiple frequencies along the way and switch back and forth as you go without having to um, scramble to adjust the next frequency. You do have an updated Garmin um, transponder down here, so that's kind of a nice feature to have. Um, just to finish out the center here, obviously your flaps and your um, throttle, your mixture control. You do have the, um, the microphone here, your elevator trim, and then of course your fuel selector, which is left, right, both and off selection for the fuel. Uh, rounding out the panel over here, we do have an upgraded CHT, a digital CHT gauge. Helps when you're controlling your engine temperatures to know what your um, cylinder head temp is. And then the benefit of having um, this mounted here is that it makes it easy for both the left and right seat flying. Um, it's easy to see from both directions. Um, all of the data is built in with this. Um, we've got synthetic vision, it's set up with the um, ADSB in having a WAS GPS inbuilt, so that makes everything just that much easier to use. Um, obviously it's not a Garmin G3X, but that would cost fourteen to $15,000, but the capabilities of this system are still remarkable for what it is. Up here you've got your vertical card compass, which is just like your DG down here, so it's very easy to be able to set and monitor your direction using that. Overall clean, um, a couple of spots in the plastic here that could be addressed, but um, I mean, it's in beautiful condition overall. So four, it can fly and land in the dark without any gauges, vacuum, or electricity using the panel mounted iPad system with the ADS-B in and WAS. Also, the stole kit will give you an added safety margin for the slow approach without going into a stall because you'll have to use the ground speed instead of true airspeed. So moving into the interior here, you can see that the seats have been um, fully reupholstered with a um, beautiful rich um, leather interior. Um, they do have the nice Skyhawk embroidery on all four seats. Uh, makes it look very rich. Going to the back seats here, just to show how comfortable they are. Um, nice and plush, they've got a little um, extra cushion all the way through to make it 
comfortable for anybody sitting in the back seats. Um, you've got four place intercom system. So all four people that are in the plane can use the um, radio and listen to the radio calls. Um, the uh, headliner has been replaced with a full plastic headliner. That's in nice condition. As well as up here, you can see the um, three-point shoulder harness for the front seats. And then these rosin sun visors, which are absolutely wonderful when you're flying into the sun. They make it very easy to see, keeps the glare of the sun out of your eyes. And we've got air vents up front here that open very wide and get a lot more air throw airflow through them and then this one has the temperature gauge on it which is very helpful to be able to see what your outside temp is and also when calculating the true air speed on the indicator the gross weight of this Cessna 172M is 2300 pounds the useful load is 913 pounds the fuel capacity is 42 gallons or 252 pounds so the payload is 661 pounds. Number five, it burns less fuel because it has a clean electronic ignition system and a power flow exhaust. So right now we've got it set up at about 110 true airspeed and we're running about 2300 RPM. So if we convert that over to miles per gallon, that actually gives us about 20 miles to the gallon right now, which is an excellent fuel burn, fuel consumption for the speed that we're going and the distance that we can travel. Six, it can take off and land in very short fields and out in the backcountry where a standard 172M can't. The ground roll decreases by 305 feet. Seven, it can fly higher than a standard 172M and eight, it can glide much longer with no power than a standard 45 knots that you can see just how stable it is to fly it at these slow speeds they come in very handy when you're doing an approach to a very short back frontier field Like we're barely moving at all. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel. We will be creating more fun and informative videos in the future. See you next time.